Hello, and thank you for joining me for the fourth data analysis bootcamp in Python. Uh, and we're going to do the half week number two, the univariate analysis in Seaborn. Uh, before we get started, though, let's, let's recap our mnemonics from the last class. Okay, so we have, we talked about the area plot, and really we use that in, to determine, or we can use it to determine how our variables or features are moving together. Okay. Uh, and really kind of flowing together, kind of like the river here, the river <laughs> data analysis plot, and how our, how our features are flowing and moving together, and when they don't, okay. We discussed the histogram plot, which is a really a fundamental plot, and its kind of main feature is that it allows us to remove um, a certain amount of noise, depending on how many bins we're adding. We can just determine the amount of generalization as if our data set was larger and removing, removing the noise created by having a smaller sample. We discussed the scatter plot that is used to identify trends and patterns between two variables. Problem is with, you know, in this day and age with so much data, it is often not as useful as it used to be because there's just too much data to really get a solid understanding of these trends and patterns. Although it's a good starting point. We discussed the pi plot, which is not everyone's favorite, but I just from finance, it's, it's always used to rep represent investment portfolios. So I'm pretty comfortable with the pi plot. I would say the one way that you want to use it, though, is you want to make sure that you're noting it. You're you're actually putting the percentages of each each section, each wedge of your pi plot, because eyes are not our eyes is, or human eyes are not good at determining. They can say one's bigger or smaller, but the exact proportions our our eyes are difficult find that difficult to tell. So it's good to make sure that you note this, and I think that really. Um, solidifies the things that are, are kind of not good about the pipeline and a really cool feature is that we can also explode it and and you know highlight certain wedges in, in the presentation would be excellent for those we talked about the box plot and that has allowed really when the data is coming out of our box or outside of the whiskers that would be defined as our outliers okay and really box plots are used for outlier detection we discussed the scatter matrix which is pretty busy and it's not usually our final plot but allows us to determine where we go from here where we want to explore what else we wanted to explore in our data set okay. we discussed the auto regression plot that it allows us to determine to usually used in a time series but this row has a correlation with other rows and really determining what the auto, the self-correlation is inside of our data set. Again, usually used in a time series data set. We discussed Andrew's curves, which helps us determine the strength of, or maybe strength is a strong, is not the right word, but I would say how closely packed together each category is. So using many features, we decompose that into a smaller amount of dimensions. So usually two dimensions, and we're able to get a sense then if the features create kind of tightly packed together clusters in, in a sense, not categories, if, if the data in each category is tight, is close together or not. So it can give us a guide, an idea of the strength of the categories, or maybe we should be breaking up our categories a little bit more or a little bit less determining. We discussed how we can do a really cool feature is regardless of the scale, we can plot features on top of each other in that we can just use the secondary y axis equals true and plot in different scales on different axes, but put them right on top of each other. Sometimes that is helpful. Other times it would be helpful to plot them right next to each other side by side or, you know, above and below. And depending on your data set, it will, it will determine which one makes the most sense. But pandas makes both of those incredibly easy and quick to use. So you can try out both of them in a very short amount of time. And lastly, we discussed that pandas data frames allow us to highlight the features, which can be really valuable just to highlight the things that are important for communicating your results it can be pretty handy just to make it to help people. You might be familiar with your data, but someone reading your report for the first time might not be. And so it helps them focus right on what is important and get right to the information they're supposed to see instead of getting lost in all of the data. Okay, so let's get started on our data analysis class.